Hey, it's Empress Rose here and welcome to our collective reading. To start us off, I was looking at my scrying ball again and I saw a sheep. It's a, it's a very fancy sheep. It's a big sheep. It's very fancy. She's got her best foot forward, a little bow in her hair, um, and she's fluffy and clean and just beautiful sheep. Um, and a you, <laughs> a you. Um, and then uh, with all of that going on, I started remembering like Little Bo Peep and then the poem, Little Bo Peep has lost her sheep and doesn't know where to find them. Blah, 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 blah. They'll come home wagging their tails behind them. So um, that's what the scarring ball um, was showing me and thinking about you know, things that feel lost, things that feel um, lost causes, uh, something you've wanted but haven't been able to access or find, and um, leaving it alone, letting it come, it'll return to you. Like, um, what's that phrase? If it's yours, let it go, if, you know, if let it go, why can't I remember that? Um, you know, let it go, if it comes back to you, it's yours. If it doesn't, then it never was to begin with. Something like that. So, um, but this is definitely about she. Not only is the sheep like, not only are you, is the you, um, prancing and it's not just coming back home. It's like prancing into the future, um, very dressed up, very. Um, it is presenting itself. So pretty cool. Okay, that was just like 200 cards that came out here. I mean, that surprised me. I haven't thought of that, that poem in like oh, 15 years. That nursery rhyme. All right, well, these moonology cards don't want to say anything. Okay, they were like, we, said, we tried to say something, but you didn't want it. But now here, here they are. Well, in the uh, spirit of our returning sheep, we have the energy is gaining momentum. This card always reminds me of getting on the freeway of like the on ramp. So um, something is, yeah, gaining momentum, the energy, the intention, it seems clarified, the direction seems clarified, uh, waxing moon. So something's becoming clearer and clearer the more you go along it, um, it's building, it's building on what's already, what's already come before it. So the energy is building. Um, it's not like a new, a completely different direction, but it is building on, um, a past direction, a past, uh, oh man, I just got this sense of nostalgia for a deck that's not here. Of like, oh, wish that deck was here. You know what? I'm, I'm going to go get it. Okay, I still have three more Moonology cards to read, but um, I'm going to do the Mystical Moments, the Oracle of Mystical Moments here, which is distracting. Like, <laughs> All right, let's see if we have anything. Watch this deck's like, actually, I didn't really want to talk at all. Okay, there we go. No, it did. Night Ride. So a lot of confusion. <laughs> so maybe things are becoming clearer. Um, but, uh, it seems to be like, this is coming out of this foggy, dark night. Uh, there's a foggy, dark night. Um, there's not been a lot of progress that's been able to have been made. Uh, there's a sense of protecting somebody else. There's a sense of other obligations and also the situation just not being conducive to moving forward. Um, it's a little bit of hanged man energy that I'm getting off of this. There's just like obligations and other people we need to take care of and other things that, and, and just a lot of other priorities um, and not being able to see. That's one of the things about fog is it makes it like hard to see where we're going and what's happening. Um, you know, the elephant has the memory, the stamina, the owl though, 
could be moving quickly, but has this other obligation. So there's, there's loyalty here. There's a lot of loyalty here. And because of that loyalty, um, things, things have become difficult. Like the, the owl could see at night, but the owl can't see in the fog. The elephant could keep moving. They're just, they're, there's a way that this team could be working together much more swiftly and much more quickly, but because of extenuating circumstances, they just haven't been able to move forward um very fast but this the it's almost like a gear shift feeling of like okay we've sort of been stuck right here and just like well this this project can't move forward there's all these other things we have to deal with there's uh, something in the environment maybe even something we're not even aware of um and something something about time and um, external situations and extenuating circumstances that made something very unclear and very murky. But then we have this um, energy gaining momentum moving forward, moving forward now. It's like the fog is starting to clear. Um, it's still very present actually in this card, but we're starting to be able to see above it and move things forward. Again, there's three characters in this card. Um, so it's not necessarily specifically three, but there is a sense of um, moving forward now. Okay, and then we, you are good enough. This is about, you know, good self-esteem, good, um, you are worthy of the work that you want to put into yourself. Um, you're, you're, you have what it takes. You are good enough. Are you you know, so, so are a lot of people, but, um, but that doesn't mean we can't feel good enough. It's not like, well, I'm good enough. So they're not, or they, they're more good enough than I am. Like, like you're good enough. A lot of other people are good enough. And even the other people in this team that hasn't really been able to move forward, or maybe there's been some confusion or maybe some, um, difficulty in moving forward. But this, ah, oh, this wants, this wants to tell, say like to the, um, the extenuating circumstances, the external circumstances aren't about you and your value and your worth. It's about something else. It's about just the environment. Nobody, maybe, you know, you have a product out there, but everybody just paid their taxes. So nobody has any money right now, or they have like other obligations to, to other things or or it's just a busy time for everybody, so they haven't been able to, to do this. But it's not about you. Like you're doing, you know, we're always looking to self-improve. Um, so that's part of what makes you good enough too, is that you're looking to improve yourself, looking at um, how you can do things better, that sort of thing. So, you know, even if you're not perfect, you're not perfect right now, and I'm not perfect right now, and they aren't perfect right now. But um, part of what makes us good enough is our willingness to learn and improve and improve according to the situations that we're in too, right? What's perfect, a great match in this situation isn't necessarily in another situation. The skills and the patience needed in this situation isn't necessarily what's needed in this situation. So again, with the gear shift, you can do the gear shift, you can shift modes, you can, um, but it's a learning process. So, and then, uh, it's time to take action, new moon in Aries. So maybe we don't necessarily know where we're going, but there is a sense of moving forward, stepping boldly into the future as our little you is doing And this, you know, the, the Ram reminds me of the you. Um, and I like this you, E W E are good enough. You are good enough. And then bring love into the situation, new moon in Aquarius. So showing appreciation, bringing genuine, authentic, authenticity into a situation. Um, there's interdependence. Uh, there's just like a frank understanding of emotions and sharing those emotions and those feelings. So taking action and the new moon energy is always about intention, setting intention. So um, maybe planning out an action, thinking about an action and bringing authenticity and love, you know? All right, and then this deck. This is interesting, the decks kind of almost kind of swapped out from what I had set up before. This one right before I turned on the camera, we went and got the crow deck. Okay. 
All right. Okay, that's gonna be enough. That's it. Four, four more from the crow deck. Okay. Interesting. This one I suspected. This one, this one I saw before it came out. The waterproof. Um, a situation that is requiring all your strength. Um, so the strength card and the waterproof card. This is like staring something down, a big scary. Staring a big scary down. And what's interesting too is that we want to, um, you know, we want to visualize these really gorgeous, happy futures for ourselves, um, open our minds up to their possibility, to the reality of that. But there's also a sense of visualizing some of your fears and how you're responding to that, right? So it's not manifesting those fears. It's not creating that situation where that's actually going to happen. It's, um, it's about, uh, looking at them and being able to remain calm and that's what staying looking in the face of something scary and being able to remain calm and maybe that scary thing you're dealing with it just in your imagination but it's helping you see yourself as a courageous person as able to stand here in the face of the big scary ideas the big scary imaginations what if this doesn't happen and remain calm and still know that even though this big scary situation is here you can handle it and being able to visualize yourself handling big scary situations like 20 years ago uh, my first my first real brush with therapy where i wasn't just going to a therapist to tell them how great i was <laughs> um was uh phobias um, it was a it was a phobia that had become debilitating over the course of a year and um, and they were like oh yeah we know exactly how to deal with this it's an eight to ten week session and here we go and it was mostly done like it can get triggered up but I all know how to deal with it so that's a little bit of this too is that those fears and those phobias that's something psychology has a pretty good wrap on um, what the psychologist I worked with said was that you know sometimes like big complicated childhood stuff is is a little messy we're not 100 percent sure what we're doing there but this this is easy we've got this we know how to deal with fears and phobias so that's a little bit of what i'm seeing it might not be in reality it might be in your imagination by giving yourself strength understanding the strength of you by going through a process like that where we're dealing directly with our with our fears with our big scaries and realizing that we are good enough that we can face this that this isn't bigger than us that, that we have the strength to face that um, again we have waterproof things going on around you don't need to affect you like this big scary thing having the capacity to let that roll right off of you and not determine who you are how you think of yourself any of those things it's just um waterproof it's just um like water off a duck's back just letting it roll off you which is like an insane saying because it's just about impossible at least for me to like let things roll off of me and not deeply affect me but this is saying that this is possible for something to not have the profound effect that you maybe perhaps currently fear that it would have on you um but you can withstand this that's what it's saying something some sort of big scary you can withstand it you can handle this um, it's not going to get into your sense of self-worth it's not going to get into and and it's not going to go any deeper than the surface level experience um, it doesn't need to and you're strong enough to handle this Okay, and then we have ghosts. So something that belongs in the past should probably stay there. Um, letting something go. It's also talking to me about memory, remembering something, that sense of nostalgia that I had really strongly for a deck I still have and still use, and in fact used earlier this week. But I was just overwhelmed with this nostalgia for it about when I was learning about the deck and how I was made, making and building connections with the deck. and um you know so much so that i stopped the video and went and got it so ghost something from the past but this is also reminding me of um little bo peep lost your sheep and doesn't know where to find them leave them alone and they'll come home wagging their tails behind them there's something from the past though 
oh, maybe it is coming towards the future. I mean, the, the, the book reading on this card is that it, it belongs in the past. Like here's where we put the past. Here is this little park like area where we put the past and we let it rest. And then we go, we go visit the past. The past doesn't come into our lives. We go visit the past, commune with the past, and then we go back to our life after having this moment, this time out. Um, but even this crow is saying like, is leaving something behind. It's no longer useful. So there could be something, and maybe, maybe some of the strength or defenses aren't maybe necessary anymore. Or maybe you're remembering this when you had to be strong, when you had to not let things affect you. Um, and maybe, I mean, you, you need a little bit of that protection going forward and that strength going forward. But oftentimes phobias can be instigated or fears can be instigated by something that has happened. And that's how mine works. And then, um, and then, you know, relearning how, that that did happen, that can happen, but it doesn't necessarily like have to dictate the future. It can be something you leave in the past. You can take your strength with you. You can take the knowledge of how strong you are with you, but it doesn't need to be affecting you day to day anymore. Um, we also have luck. So open wide, here it comes. Um, there's something very lucky um, happening here. Um, and this could relate to the energy gaining momentum. It's time to take action, bring love into the situation. I, I almost want to say like live fearlessly. There is luck here. Easier said than done. I don't know. Some people seem to be the more experience, the more they experience their own strength, the more fearless they seem to become. And other people, the more they experience situations where they have to summon their strength, the more afraid they become. But this is saying you, you do have this strength in you. And that's, that's a beautiful thing that you can now carry forward with you into the future, um, this understanding of how strong you truly are. All right, tarot time. From the bottom of the deck, judgment, talk about ghosts uh, and the sheep, something coming back from the past uh, for reevaluation. It could be evaluation, it could be reevaluation, your own reevaluation. Um, obviously, judgment is evaluation, a decision being made and announced. Decisions made and announced. Oh, there's a sense of there's a strong sense of purity and properness and um, institutions. But there's something like institutions can be really like institutions, um, organizations, companies. Uh, they can be really quite a mess, quite a maze, and there's actually no way out. It's not really a coherent maze. Nobody drew it out like houses that have like a lot of additions on them or I'm reminded of the courthouse here in my town it's it's one of the most beautiful courthouses it looks like a Disney castle um, but over the decades you know they've just kind of chopped up the inside to like you know suit whatever purpose the building needed so it's got like maybe two things on the inside that are like original. The outside still looks great. So you might think you wanna go get married in that courthouse, but once you get inside, we've got the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, and the 90s all sort of chopping up the inside. So it doesn't look anything like you would expect on the outside. Anyway, for, so this is like a metaphor for how a lot of our cultural institutions, our um, legal institutions uh, come, come into play here is that there's just a lot of like, mm -mm. Um, they, they look like something on the outside, but the inside is, you know, sausage. It's just like a lot of ground up pieces all together. So that's a little bit of what I'm seeing here is something that looks very proper and good and pure, maybe a little messier than you think on the inside, but something on the outside, well, they can present well. So it's like a well-presented decision or something like that. So that's the underlying, that's the background is like, the presentation of uh, decisions that were made 
when in fact that like the interior of that decision is actually quite a mess but um anyway so so the the appearance of authority the appearance of structure the appearance of um neatness but something something's been decided or determined or is being decided and determined evaluated but it, so to evaluate it it has to already be done right like we can't we can't score the gymnastics routine before they do the routine so something has already done and how already ended and now this is about like the judges coming back with their numbers or whatever past present inner landscape what's at issue environment to do list possible outcome okay well this big scary might not just be in your head uh, in the recent past we've had sort of a crisis um, communication breakdowns authority breakdowns um, uh, I want to say chain of command breakdowns it's been pretty explosive this is not something you wanted uh, you may have resisted this you may have fought against this this is not something you wanted but this is also reminding me of like this the ghost from the past this has ghosts from the past connotations as well as far as something that was fairly traumatic fairly difficult required a lot of your strength to endure it here you are uh, having the strength to try to hold it all together while everything's falling apart um so uh so and then it's reminding me of these crows here as far as like needing to have a lot of strength um and ultimately something not not affecting you as bad as i think you thought it was going to at the beginning but in the past we have the tower card so something falling apart uh it did require a lot of strength this could be this the scary thing that's causing um that you need to leave in the past and realize that it, it is part of the past now um so yeah the tower card here in the past thank god <laughs> oh <laughs> because we do not need the tower card in the future I, that's that's just like redraw the card start over <laughs> i've never done that before but i might um well no i think we have those away you can read it i would Okay, uh, and Six of Swords, basically reiterating what we've already discussed here is this detaching and moving on, leaving that tower in the past, leaving that in the past. Yes, it required all your strength. And yes, honestly, it looks like the strength might also be required in moving on and moving forward um, because once, once um, the need for strength, once that gets and protection once that gets um fired up it can be really hard to t tamp it down because it's like well no we didn't see that one coming either so we better just keep our guard up all of the time now um so but this is saying actually i'm um, this this thing fell apart and so it could be leaving a situation just actually just like this is too much of a mess i'm leaving and it's scary to leave it's also scary to stay. This can also be um, intellectual detachment of like, we're not, uh, that's, that's the past. That's not happening again. That's not happening right now. I know that I'm strong. I know that I can deal with it. It's not happening right now. So I'm just going to live my life as well as possible. Um, so it could be intellectual detachment or actually just moving on from a situation, uh, leaving I mean, if you're leaving the tower behind, you're not actually leaving a tower behind because the tower no longer even exists. Um, it's a, it's ruins. It's uh, it's something, and you may have all you may still be in the process of leaving it behind, right? I'm just seeing some parallels between these two cards. They're both headed in the right direction. She almost looks like she's riding on this crow here, and they're moving forward. This is the past. This is the thing. That they no longer need to be attached to this is either a physical place um a job apartment a house a physical place or just a um, the way things were the way things have been we're moving on we're moving forward from where we've been either mentally emotionally or physically so mm, i wish that was more i wish that was clearer Right. Again, we have this moving forward, moving on and being able to do so much more swiftly than we have been able to do so in the past. Uh, hopes, fears and inner landscape, four of wands. Um, 
You might be wanting a promotion, wanting a deeper commitment, wanting to learn something, to level up, to get a better, a better perspective, to celebrate a great perspective. Um, but there's also like a sense of commitment and, and excitement and partying and, um, enlightenment, opening up a new level and being happy. There's a sense of wanting to move on but also wanting to be happy. Um, all right, and then uh, what's at issue here? Five of Cups. Again, this is just, we could have just stopped with the crows. Um, this Five of Cups in reverse is a really great card. It means that you're starting to look towards the future that you have been going through a grieving process, right? The five of cups in reverse, these are all the blossoms she's lost. She's knee deep in water, emotion, um, looking at loss. But in the reverse, we have her, well, if I could turn her head, she'll be looking at what she hasn't lost. She'll be much more optimistic. It is the, the glass half full and the glass um, half empty. She's starting to see the glass half full, starting to see the value perhaps in what she went through starting to see um starting to gain this enlightenment that she's wanting the cool thing about enlightenment is if you want it you got it you know it might take a minute but you definitely it's one of those things where if you wish for it you will receive it for sure um so she's starting to heal there's a healing emotional healing going on here and starting to feel better about things starting to feel more hopeful not quite so focused on all that's gone wrong on the tower moment right the tower things fall apart so that they can come back together again and there's a book called when things fall apart i think it's Thich Nhat Han. it's a great book it's just about how important it is for things to fall apart so that we can rebuild with all the lessons we learned if things didn't ever fall apart we'd just be stuck with the same lego tower we built when we were five and that's it and that's the only lego tower we'll ever have but because it comes apart because that tower comes apart we can rebuild every, every time with everything we learned, the new things that we want, the new things, the new Legos, we can incorporate those in, you know, we got some fancy new Legos, we can make a tower now with those. Like, so um, this is sort of starting to look at rebuilding, starting to heal from a crisis, from an issue. And I think with some intentionality as well, with the four of wands, looks like we're wanting to heal, we're trying to heal, we're wanting to learn from that and move forward because there's a sense where i know for myself i can get stuck in like learning from an experience and it's a little bit like rumination but i justify it by saying i'm still figuring it out i'm still learning so there's a sense though of it's if it's both here of um we're both able to intellectually move on and emotionally move on and we have we've wanted to learn we have learned we are learning and we're moving on what's in your environment seven of swords uh i don't know how this is supposed to help us here but um lies uh deceitfulness masking somebody masking um as beautiful but also just serving their own selves serving their own needs taking something that's yours there's an unfairness here um, but the deceptive one feels that they are being fair to themselves. Um, and so there is someone that's, that's taking something that is like yours. It's sneaky behavior. And okay. So when the seven of swords comes out as you, I'm like, you know, when all is fair in love and war, you know, you gotta, sometimes you have to be clever in the ways that you survive in the ways that you, you do things. If you're looking at a situation, you're like, yeah, there's no way forward unless I do this. Um, then, you know, then, then I'm on your side, but I'm not, on, I'm not, this is somebody else and I'm not on their side because, um, uh, they're being sneaky. They're taking something that doesn't belong to them. And that actually might've created the tower moment somebody 
um, lying or taking something that's not theirs and they feel like they deserve it. There is such a strong sense here in this card for me right now where they feel like they deserve your, um, your future. They deserve your future. They deserve your, um, what you've earned. They deserve everything you've got. And it might not even be much. It's a bizarre thing. You can feel like you don't have very much, but other people feel like they deserve that too. So there's somebody here that is or has been and probably still is being sneaky, masking, um, cloaking intentions, all that kind of thing, um, looking like they're all sweetness and light, but actually here to grab something that they feel very much that they deserve. So what I want to say here is you're not going to be able to convince them that they don't deserve this. Um, that's not going to be the, the way to go here. This, this could be a big scary continuing to, to be in your environment too, although we're talking about healing and recovering. How do you re how do we recover from these, um, ongoing events or, or ongoing situations? How do we move forward from them when the situation itself, there's a sense of detaching from it. It's harder than it looks. So, um, seven of swords. Uh, someone's still being sneaky. So there's no debate here is what I'm seeing is like, you can't talk this person out of it. They don't care. They, they, not only do they, they, you're wrong and they're right. They deserve this. Um, so there's not really a lot you can do to, um, say otherwise, like to, to so you're going to have to, if you're going to protect yourself from this, you're going to have to t do some other method, but, uh, you know, typically talking it out with someone is fine, except when somebody's lying, then it's like, well, why talk it out? Cause you just lie. So don't talk it out. And then also like, especially if they just feel like they deserve something that's yours. Well, where, 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 how, what are we going to talk about? Like, you don't, so anyway, there's a sense to work things out and a sense to talk about things, but then there's also a sense of like, what's the point? Now I'm seeing the next card, which is two of pentacles, which I'm not super stoked to see. I'm like, why well, talk it out? This is like negotiate. You're going to have to negotiate some things. Um, it is negotiation. It seems to be taking place in the same place as this judgment card is. You might have to juggle a couple things. Oh, I like that one. The juggling of a couple different things, a little bit precarious, a little bit of a delicate situation, and you're having to maintain composure. I feel like there's a sense of being watched, being seen, of an audience watching you try to maintain composure and do something rather difficult in a difficult situation. Um, but there's a sense of two of pentacles traditionally also has negotiation involved in it. And I'm just like, well, you can't negotiate with this. This person, um, a isn't going to be negotiating in good faith and B doesn't see that they need to negotiate. So, um, that's going to make it really difficult for you to negotiate with someone who doesn't see that they need to negotiate. So two of pentacles, it's just juggling. There's a lot on your plate. This may feel very precarious. This may feel very public. Um, this almost has a performance vibe to it, um, where everybody wants to watch you do something really difficult. Um, it does seem difficult. Well, and I was just talking about the balancing of healing versus, um, learning from our lessons and, and learning and going forward and learning from that this does happen, but also healing from it. And that is a bit of a juggling act. Like, okay, we have to acknowledge the hurt and the suffering here. We also have to move on from it. So how do we, how do we learn and move on at the same time? Um, same thing with the five of cups. Uh, so this luck thing just seems like a random thing that just plops right in here just for you, just a little bit of luck. And I feel like that's what you need in this situation is a little bit of luck, a little bit of wind at your back, a little bit of clarity on how to both honor the past and move on from it. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, possible outcome three of wands, having hope and having faith. And that's exactly where we're going. Like, look at the tap. We started the tower card in the recent past crises, and then we're having a lot of hope and a lot of faith in the future. And we may need to negotiate. Maybe it's not with this one. Maybe it's with somebody else. We, we might need to negotiate something, juggle a couple different priorities, but then also with this five of cups in reverse, this looks like we're going from the tower 
this, this loss, this upset, um, and all the feelings we've had about it, we're detaching, we're moving forward to a place of a lot more faith. We're going from realizing that this glass is perhaps broken and shattered all over the floor, so it's not even half full, um, half empty. So there is a sense of moving on from the glass half empty to the glass half full, to this optimistic state, to seeing the future, seeing possibilities, and having faith in the future, a future that you can see and envision for yourself. Um, the energy gaining momentum, the energy shifting, uh, coming out of a difficult time um, and being able to move forward. And it, there's a sense of evaluating something that's already happened, that's already affected us and needing to um, like deal with it, juggle it, handle it. And then this is bringing us to a place of a beautiful faith in the future, reasons for faith. And I see messages here, like a lot of support, a lot of messages. There are a lot of reasons um, for you to, to have faith. Um, and there's like more organized thoughts as well that come in here. And it's interesting because there are these, this is just looking at this tower that shows up. So here's a bunch of towers, lots of towers here. Um, the, it's like all in the same place. Here's this tower crumbling. Here's this tower that what you actually want is to build here. Like this tower is on a volcano, but you're still very focused and very interested in building despite having, so you, that's what it is. You're, you're interested in rebuilding. Like here, this fell apart and you want to rebuild and you want to build back better. And you want to, um, make more, um, make more layers and, and actually make it stronger and make it better. So here's the tower here, it fell apart in the past. Here's your wish, your dream to build this tower up. Here you are dancing on top of the tower, figuring out how to, how to do this, how to make this work, how to juggle these priorities. And then here you are really, I feel like rising above the towers. Like the judgment almost seems like one of the, like, more earthy vibes here is this this is an earthy judgment this is an earthy decision this is this is down in the grit like she's but the faith here is way up above all of this all of the towers it rises above the towers and looks to the future beyond the tower where you're at so you're 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 wanting to build a tower and here i see you dancing on top of a tower and then um, that's your current situation is juggle this all dance on top of the tower it is precarious it is difficult it is um, you do seem to have an audience that's making it even more difficult um, but this gives you so much faith for the future and you can rise above just the whole concept of towers and structures and having faith in yourself and your ability it's reminding me of that phrase about, um, you know, the bird sitting on the branch isn't putting its trust on the branch. It's putting it to never, ever, ever crack or break. It's putting its trust in itself to should that branch crack. My bird is like clinging onto the branch. So here's a little bird. You got a little, little sitting on the branch here. <laughs> and, and should this branch crack, the bird can fly away. So that's what I'm seeing here is a lot of confidence in yourself and rising above any even concept of a tower and needing to have things and structures in your life be a certain way in order for you to feel safe and secure. But understanding a lot of that safety and security, um, you can hold that within, within your mind, within your heart. But I do love you dancing on top of this tower. Like, not only are you building a new tower, you're dancing on top of it. Two of Pentacles can also look like an opportunity coming in and having to juggle it with what you already have on your plate. So if an opportunity comes in, um, you, you're going to want to take it and just try to, it'll make you very busy. Two of Pentacles looks like a very busy time that can be difficult to navigate. All right, and then we're looking to the wild Kuan Yin for one last little prayer here. Close it up. What am I missing? Okay. Usually when my cards don't want to talk, it's because something's something's missing, but 
it'll come to me an hour later and I'll not be able to share it with you, but um, you can fill in the blanks though. You can figure out what I'm missing. So uniquely you, the more we're willing to become authentic, ooh, this has a lot to do with authenticity. We started off with the new moon in Aquarius with authenticity. Rather than conventional, the more we will need to eschew conditioning in favor of aliveness. Be willing to run the risk of being authentic so you can live from your heart and experience real joy. So embracing authenticity is scary as it is, especially in this, in this little crazy little world we have here. All right, so go you be you, be authentically you. All right, I hope this was helpful for you, for me too, I hope. <laughs> um, so, and we'll talk again next week.